Greetings, and welcome to Freedom Quest. There are plenty of parents who have shed many a tear over their wayward children. And the enemy pounds you over the head with questions like, what on earth did I do wrong? Well let's face it, we all did plenty wrong, but ultimately, each person has to decide their own path in this life, and the life to come. You cannot make someone believe. God in his gracious mercy, has given each of us free will. And that freedom to choose, will not be impinged upon by anyone, even God. God forces no one to love him. But he gives them a myriad of opportunities, to see the light. Luke chapter 19 verse 41 says, that Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem, because of their unbelief. As he weeps for anyone who rejects his offer of salvation, and eternal life. So what should a parent do, when you have a wayward child? Pray hard, and be patient. When the prodigal son left home, it broke his father's heart. Partially because the father would miss his son, but mostly because he knew what the prodigal was about to suffer. As parents, we hate to see our children make the same mistakes that we did. We hate to see them go down that path of youthful foolishness. But if you remember, you did the same thing, when you were their age. Oh to be young again. Young, and stupid. No thanks. So like the father in the parable, we can only wait and hope. Hope that like the prodigal son, they too will come to their senses. But is there anything else we can do, other than just sit and wait? Absolutely, you can pray your heart out. But you can also do one more thing. Study the evidence for creation. Unlike the prodigal son, who was enticed by the allure of fame and fortune, most wayward kids today have been led astray by the public school system, social media, and the vast array of misinformation put forth by Satan himself. So the first step is to clarify the terms. Know your enemy and their game plan. So that starts by establishing your worldview. Your worldview is simply the lens from which you view the world. And although there are many variations, there are only two main worldviews. Theism and atheism. Theism is simply a belief in God. And to be more specific, the God of creation, the God of the Bible. The scripture insists that God created the universe. Atheism insists that the universe created itself. Obviously, they cannot both be right. So let's look at the actual evidence. Not the bullcrap pseudo-science they teach in the government-run public school system, but the actual undeniable evidence of creation. But let's get this straight, right off the bat. Atheism is a religion, and naturalism is their theology. Naturalism is the atheistic hypothesis that all things are natural. In other words, there is no God, so everything created itself. Their motto is, since there is no God, the universe must have created itself from nothing. Since there is no God, then life on earth must have created itself from non-living chemicals. Since there is no God, mankind must have evolved from a rock. And they call that science. In reality, it is nothing more than atheistic propaganda masquerading as science. Science is supposed to be observable, repeatable, and verifiable. But have any of their origin theories ever been observed, repeated, or verified? Never, not even once. Not even close. All they have are the threadbare theories of the emperor's new clothes. The skin of the truth, stuffed with a lie. You mean to tell me that they have no actual proof, that the universe created itself from nothing? That's right my friend, not a shred of verified evidence. You mean to tell me that they have no actual proof, that life on earth, created itself from non-living chemicals? That's right my friend, not a shred of verified evidence. You mean to tell me that they have no actual proof, that mankind evolved from a rock? That's right my friend, not a shred of verified evidence. In reality, all the evidence verifies creationism, not naturalism. Not a single one of their hypotheses has been observed, repeated, or verified. Therefore, not a single one of their hypotheses qualifies as validated science. It's all just their atheistic religion of naturalism, pretending to be taking the high road of science. So what is the truth? How did this whole thing actually go down? Well technically you could sum up the whole process in one word. God. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Simple yet profound. And that's because within that one statement, God reveals the simplicity of real science, and spiritual revelation. For according to science, the Big Bang was the beginning of time, space, matter, and energy. In the beginning. That's time. God created. That's energy. The heavens. That's space. And the earth. That's matter. Time, space, matter, and energy. According to science, life created itself, from non-living chemicals, in the ocean. Genesis agrees with science, that God first created life, in the oceans. According to science, the first particles to form, after the Big Bang, were photons. Genesis agrees with science, that the first particles to form after the Big Bang, were photons. That's when God said, let there be light. According to science, just before life began on Earth, the late heavy bombardment, left the Earth formless and void. Genesis agrees with science, that just before God created life, he bombarded the Earth with new ingredients, needed to create life. But the process left the Earth, formless and void. But that event makes abiogenesis all the more impossible. Because science dates the late heavy bombardment, and the creation of life, both at 3.5 billion years ago. So according to science, abiogenesis had to happen immediately after the late heavy bombardment. Which gives them virtually no time for life to magically evolve from non-living chemicals. No time whatsoever. Abiogenesis is the pseudo-scientific hypothesis that life on Earth, created itself, from non-living chemicals. But if abiogenesis were possible, we should be seeing it happen right now, everywhere. But no one has ever witnessed that atheistic fairy tale ever happen in nature, or in their billion dollar laboratories. But they have a much bigger problem than just the mere impossibility of abiogenesis. Because they have the insane hurdle of self-replication to explain. Think about it. How in the world did the first living cell, learn to reproduce? Well according to science, it evolved that ability over millions of years. But if evolution supposedly happens during reproduction, how could it evolve, if it could not reproduce? Obviously evolving the ability to reproduce, never happened. Oh yes it did, it came from, it came from, it came from RNA. Oh really? And where did the RNA come from? And what about the information in the RNA? Was that self-produced also? Give me a break my friend. You don't seriously believe that atheistic poppycock, do you? Remember, science claims to be observable, repeatable, and verifiable. Have any of their atheistic fables ever been observed, repeated, or verified? Obviously not. Therefore their hypotheses are nothing more than smoke and mirrors. Atheistic propaganda masquerading as a valid scientific explanation, of something that is obviously impossible, outside the realm of divine intervention. But you must remember, even if you tear down the stronghold of atheistic naturalism, there is no guarantee that your unsaved or backslidden loved ones, will come to their senses. It has been my experience, that most atheists do not reject God because of a lack of evidence, it is a lack of desire. You can tear down the evidence of atheism, and they can see it fall like a house of cards, right before their eyes. But until they want to believe, all the evidence in the world, will not sway them toward the truth. So like the father of the prodigal son, you must simply wait. Wait, and pray. Pray hard, and pray patiently. And just know, that God loves them, even more than you do. My precious heavenly father, please be with my friend here, and all the parents of wayward children. Give us all the patience to endure the process of our prodigal children, coming to their senses. Protect our wayward offspring, until they come back home. Give us the strength we need to endure their rebellion. Open their eyes to see you. Open their ears to hear you. And soften their hearts, to receive you. And remind them Lord, that you love them so much, that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And bring them back home, safe and sound. Then help them to make up for lost time. Restore to them, the years that the locust have eaten. And make them strong and secure in their faith. Never more to doubt or fear. And then, when their time on earth is over, bring them home to heaven. 
Jesus, one day you'll make everything new. One day you will bind every wound. The former things shall all pass away. No more tears, or sorrows. When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. We will sing, and shout the victory.